Here at the Master Nodes, we are not making any claims as to income you may earn. Before entering any agreement, please use caution and seek the advice of a professional advisor, such as attorney or financial advisor. Please ensure your own research is done before investing any money into the market. What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing today? Thank you for joining for today's podcast. I'm Nestor Sanchez. This is my boy, Ryan Prendes. Hey, what's going on, everyone? And we are the master nodes. Remember to follow our own personal social media accounts to stay up to date with us. Mine is at master node one. My boy Ryan's is at, at Ry the crypto guy. Make sure to stay till the end to hear some additional resources that we will provide for you so you can get more zoned into cryptocurrency. And we're just going to jump straight into it. So this is news of the week that we feel you guys need to know. And this news is very, very viable to the markets. Uh, We're going to be providing you guys two news pieces with two different events that are going on within the world right now that are currently affecting the crypto market, either uh, market prices or just affecting um, the market in general. So first things first, this week's feature article is a Forbes article by Billy Bambro with the headline, Bitcoin and crypto prices have gone into free fall after Russia escalated the crisis in Ukraine and deployed Russian troops to eastern regions of the country. So as we've seen, crypto markets have seen a small price crash recently. Uh, This crash has wiped around $400 billion off the crypto market over fear uh, this past week of war happening in Ukraine. Uh, Another thing that we noticed this last week as the Bitcoin greed fear index has returned to extreme fear. Uh, This is something that we consistently monitor, uh, not just us, but the crypto community consistently monitors, which is literally a greed um, fear index scale that shows the current state of investors within the Bitcoin market. So if investors are getting greedy, the scale would tip more towards the greedy side. If they're getting fearful and they're not sure where the market's really going, it will tip more towards the fear side. Uh, usually we like to see it right in the middle. That's like the nice little sweet spot that a lot of people are comfortable buying and selling within. And for those of you that don't know what's going on in Ukraine, Russia has moved thousands of its troops to strategic places along the Ukraine border. One of the reasons why Russia is doing this is because they have long resisted Ukraine's move towards European institutions, both NATO and the EU. Now, Mr. Putin has claimed Ukraine is a puppet of the West and has never been a proper state. His core demand is that the West guarantee Ukraine will not join NATO. So yeah, that's pretty crazy how we're going to war over basically alliances, right? You know, because of NATO or because of the of Russia and their alliances. And we th- this is very important because crypto, it's a global currency, yes. And it is decentralized. So that's why people use it as a hedge against you know, governments, you know, they don't want to be holding on to US dollar, they don't want to be holding on to the Russian currency. And it is decentralized, but it does not stop fear from entering the markets. As Ryan was saying earlier, the fear and greed index, it's all the way down to extreme fear. Back when um, these talks are happening, and it hasn't taken place just yet. But just these talks have caused you know, the US market to tank, the stock market. We have cryptocurrencies, basically all of them have gone down. We're going to see um, this week, everything's gone down from um, recovering to now going down 13%, 12%, 15%. And we're going to talk more about those price points later on. But it's, and I just had to put my thing in there and talk about, you know, this war that's happening right now. Yeah, and what's crazy is that this morning, actually, President Joe Biden said that Russia has actually begun its invasion of Ukraine, and he announced sweeping sanctions on the major Russian bank, Veb, and its military bank. And actually, the sanctions will prohibit American financial institutions from processing transactions for Veb and its military bank. Uh, This would effectively cut banks out of transactions involving the U.S. dollar, uh, which is the global reserve currency. Uh, Biden's announcement came after Russia's parliament approved President Vladimir Putin's request this morning to use military force outside of the country's borders, a development that appears designed to authorize a broader attack on Ukraine. Biden also announced that the United States will implement comprehensive sanctions on Russian sovereign debt. And Biden said this morning, 
in a White House remarks that that means we've cut off Russia's government from Western financing. It can no longer raise money from the West and cannot trade in its new debt on our markets or European markets either. I definitely think that this news um, is very significant. Not only is it impacting the crypto markets, it's impacting all financial markets in general. Whenever we see news of war or hear news of war, we see this trend. We see that people are like, oh, okay, you know, we might be going to war. I don't know what sparks fear among people to think that, you know, I need to sell my assets and hold on to my cash. Like, do they not know that (laughs) we lose money to inflation every year? Like, like, you you get what I mean, right, Nestor? Yeah, but I think it's more security, right? I'm going to be able to have this money in the bank that it may not seem like it's losing value, but it kind of is. But, you know, it doesn't fluctuate as much as the stock market, you know, Uh, literally, like we're saying the last uh, week, around 13 percent of Bitcoin cryptocurrency has gone down. So um, at least with the U.S. dollar, it's a solid three percent every year. But uh, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like they want cash on hand just in case or whatever happens. Um, But I actually did want to say like the U.S. has influence over Russia because they use the U.S. dollar. Right. Mm -hmm. So because they're using their specific currency, they're able to influence Russia's decisions. Now, what currency can other people use that doesn't have an effect with a specific country? And that's cryptocurrency. Right. Mm -hmm. So I saw this meme, you know, Russia is going to war because Putin wants to buy the dip. So (laughs) imagine that, you know, like uh, basically this could be a good time for Russia to be like, hey, we're going to become totally sovereign. We're not going to use your currency anymore. We're going to use cryptocurrency that's decentralized. But, you know, we don't really know what exactly is going to happen. I don't think he was going to war just for the dip. But, you know, that was a funny thing that kind of, you know, sparked that interest. Okay, if we're using the U.S. dollar only, that's why they have power over us. If it's decentralized, no one else can control it, then nobody can stop someone from using that currency. But now to the next article, we're going to be talking about Canada. For those of you guys who don't know, there is a little uh, dispute going on amongst truckers and Canada. Um, Ryan does know a bit more about this. He was talking about it on our Twitter, if you guys can go check that out as well. But I'll let Ryan kind of talk about what's happening in Canada with these truckers and the government. Yeah, so essentially what's happening is that Canadian semi-truck convoy organizers are upset and began protesting the Canadian federal government's recent law that passed that required truckers to be fully vaccinated or to have to go through a 14-day quarantine upon return to the U.S. Uh, They feel that their rights are being violated, and because of this, they're doing active protests within the cities or multiple cities um, in Canada to kind of prevent any traffic flow uh, within these cities. What they're doing is they're setting up quite literal blockades with their trucks um, along major intersections within certain cities uh, to prevent the flow of traffic uh, going in and out of Canada. And they're doing this to bring awareness to the fact that they feel that their government's policies don't align with their own um, personal beliefs or, or they don't align with, you know, what they think should and should not happen uh, when it comes to uh, vaccination. I think a lot of people are just kind of over COVID-19. Um, and, you know, it, it's it's fair to say because, you know, you it's different in uh, different countries. You know, you see some countries that are going heavy still with regulations um, and in terms of laws like mask policies, vaccine policies, um, you know, travel restrictions and whatnot. And so this is just another example of, you know, kind of people protesting against their government to bring awareness to this um, indiscrepancies that they see uh, with these laws. Yeah. So how does that tie into cryptocurrency? So these truckers, they were they were not obviously getting paid to work. um, So they were looking for funding from other sources. They created a GoFundMe. A lot of people actually supported their their protest and they were getting lots and lots of money. But the Canadian government did not like that. So GoFundMe actually stopped those fronts from going through. 
Now they were looking for an alternative. What's an alternative where governments can't really control the currency flow or stop these things from happening? And that's cryptocurrency, right? So um, these truckers are now trying to get funding through cryptocurrency. And how do you get cryptocurrency through exchanges? Now, they're, the regulators in Canada warn crypto exchanges to not promote self-custodial wallets. Um, tweets from the CEO of Coinbase and Kraken advocated for self-custody of digital assets, and they're being looked at by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police for violating these sanctions that were placed to curb these trucker protests in the country. So the Canadian semi-truck, um, they, were, they were very angry about that. You know, they tried to stop funding for these truckers and the Ontario Securities Commission sent the tweet to the police because they believe that the crypto executives were actually offering advice on how to get out of the sanctions, right? So the reason they were able to control these funds, stop them from going through on these exchanges and they were able to sanction them is because cryptocurrency exchanges actually have custody of your, your currency. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys have heard the terms, not your keys, not your crypto. So these cryptocurrencies actually have, um, they're able to stop um, accounts from happening, from trading, from moving around funds because they actually have the keys to that wallet. Now, in order to, for them not to um, be able to control your stuff, you can actually put it onto a cold storage wallet or a self-custodial wallet where you have the keys it's basically like the difference between putting your money in a bank versus keeping your money in a safe. The bank can control your funds to a certain extent, but if all your cash is in a safe, nobody can do nothing without you knowing the specific code and you getting into it and accessing your funds. So um, late last week, the Ontario Provisional Police and Royal Canadian Mounted Police um, included crypto exchanges to cease trading and freezing of the assets of designated persons so involved in the trucker protest. So around 34 associated crypto accounts were frozen and they were not able to trade. So basically we want that self custody in order to have full control of our cryptocurrency so that we can use it kind of how we would like. Yeah. And I think what's pretty crazy is that, you know, we're having these talks of, um, you know, states really stepping in and, trying to regulate as much as they can and i feel that the only reason they're really regular well uh, there's many reasons but at the end of the day what i feel that they're regulating these truckers is because it's something that they not they necessarily can't really control you know no one really has full control over crypt over any cryptocurrency it's all shared and unanimous between everyone uh, so meaning everyone has access to it no one has uh, control and so with that being said i feel like they're really fearful of cryptocurrency i feel like this is going to be a good reminder to a lot of people that are you know would protest their government and be like okay you know like my government at any point in time could stop and freeze my assets but if i'm holding on to an asset that they can control then i can move on and you know, continue with my protests. And, and these protests aren't violent. You know, these protests aren't, you know, hurting anyone. It's just literally making a point. And I feel like if a, a protest is like that, make to the point where it's like just making a point that, you know, these people are clearly upset, then, you know, more power to them. I feel that they should have access to their, to, you know, their finances and if crypto is the way for them to go about doing it, then, you know, by all means, they should go ahead and do what they have to do. Yeah, like you're saying, it's kind of like a power struggle. I think um, governments, they want to be able to control as much as they can. And the reason they have so much control over us is it goes back to we're using that currency, right? Mm -hmm. They can stop us from moving funds. They can, because they regulate all these banks, because they have control and um, certain exchanges have to get licenses and regulation and all this stuff. They have control over these assets. I mean, over, you know, these exchanges and these banks, these entities, but they can't control the individual asset. They can't control Bitcoin. They can't stop someone from sending wallet to wallet. 
be, but because we're using those exchanges, but because we're using their US, um, their dollar or whatever, they now have control and they're able to freeze assets, stop trading and all that stuff. And in, in the early days, there was no real exchange, right? Before it was more peer to peer, it was person to person or miners, you know, would sell to individual people. And most of the time it was stored in this, in a digital wallet that was only controlled by you. But now we're seeing many investors, they're using these exchanges because it's more mainstream. It's easier to hold your money on an exchange. So um, that's why these exchanges have kind of so much power over us. And, you know, representatives from Kraken and Coinbase, they've said that they're going to imply with the law because they have to, right? Oh, you comply. Said, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. Do that again, yeah. <laughs> so representatives from Kraken and Coinbase, they said that they were going to comply with the law. They said that, you know, obviously they need to because if not, they're going to lose their licenses. They're not going to be able to um, trade and help everybody out and get cryptocurrency out there. But they have taken a public stance and said they believe that money should not be censored and users should have protection from unjust seizure of assets. And like you're saying, this is just a protest. This is a nonviolent way to get their point across. And they're stopping that from happening. So they're totally able to control certain aspects because we're, we're using their currency and because they have that power over us. Yeah, just, you know, I think it's crazy how these two events, you know, one close to home and one abroad um, have been like the topic of discussion these past couple of weeks, uh, not just with, you know, the cryptocurrency, but, you know, just the finance market in general. Uh, as we've said before, stocks and cryptocurrency and really any financial market uh, on earth has really been affected by, you know, both of these crises that are happening um, in other countries. And so I just, one hope that I see coming out of this is that it will bring, bring more awareness to the money situation when it comes to governments stopping other people or other governments or other entities from getting the money that they need, you know, and, and, the problem that I've seen happen so far is that it's more of, well, they're using our money to, you know, convert cryptocurrencies to our native token or our native uh, currency. So because they're doing this, we have the right to step in and say, you know, no, like your assets are going to be frozen um, cryptocurrency or our own native currency uh, because what we feel that you guys are doing uh, doesn't align with our morals, our standards, our values. So we just aren't going to allow it. And so this really just kind of unravels away from what I feel cryptocurrency was originally intended for. It was intended to not be something that anyone can control. However, somehow, some way, these governments are still finding a way to control it. So yeah. definitely, if you still believe in the moral values of what cryptocurrency was originally designed for, um, you know, getting these wallets off or getting your money offline would be the best way to go about it. Because if yeah. not, then these governments are still going to continue to do what they're already doing. Yeah, I think a lot more people are actually going to fall down the cryptocurrency rabbit hole because of this stuff. Um, they're gonna they're gonna see why we need it so much more and they're like why were they using cryptocurrency oh governments can't control it that's crazy <laughs> now on to the top five weekly cryptos this week and how they've been doing in price action movement so first we have bitcoin which is at thirty eight thousand sixteen dollars this past week it's gone down actually 13.7 percent uh, ethereum is at two thousand six hundred and sixteen dollars with a drop this past week of 15.8%. Uh, BNB is $368 with a drop of 14% this past week. XRP actually flipped ADA to take spot number six with XRP being at 70 cents down 15.3% this past week. And ADA is actually at 85 cents uh, down also 15% this past week. 
Again, the reason why we're saying these markets are down directly correlates with recent events that are going on in the world, the events in Canada and the events in Ukraine. Uh, a lot of people are in extreme fear, not just for Bitcoin, but for the markets in general. And so we're going to see these drops in the markets. Whether that news leads to anything positive or not, it's really just kind of hard to say. You know, um, we always hope for the best, but we're definitely watching these markets to ensure that you know, our money, our own money is protected. And that wraps up today's podcast. Thank you guys for joining. As always, uh, remember to follow and subscribe to our social media accounts on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, and Twitter. All of them are at the master nodes. Our visual podcast experience can be found on YouTube and our audio podcast experience can be found on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and Google Podcasts, and all your other favorite podcast sources. Visit our website, www.themasternodes.com. Subscribe to that email list where you will receive the latest and greatest cryptocurrency information. Um, and thank you guys for joining. Yeah, and if you guys uh, want to be part of a community where you, know, you guys could speak to you know, financial advisors, NFT educators, um, real estate uh, experts, cryptocurrency experts, then our Discord then our discord is a place to be uh, the master Nodes recently started a discord where we bring everyone uh, within the financial space together to kind of discuss you know either problems that are going on within the financial world or uh, to discuss what new opportunities uh, people could look into in order to make more money within the space. Uh, if you guys are interested, just let us know and we can go ahead and add you guys to that Discord. We also wanted to talk about a new opportunity for you guys. Uh, we partnered with an academy called I Am Academy. They teach you all about cryptocurrency from A to Z, how to make money during a bull market, during a bear market. We're looking into NFTs, altcoins and all that good stuff so that you can make money when people are losing money and when the markets are going sideways. So we want you guys to join us and be a part of our team. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you guys can always join that Discord where we're going to be more active and letting you guys know more updates on that. As always, thank you guys for joining. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. Choose kindness. That kind of wraps up today's podcast. Again, thank you guys for joining. Much appreciated as always and bless up.